remember when we released that video called 10 Weird Wrestling TV Cameos and you lot flooded the comments suggesting other obscure moments when our favorite grapplers crossed over into the wider pop culture consciousness? Well, we're morally bankrupt here at Cultaholic, so we got our best intern to lurk in the comments, nick the best suggestions, then subjected them to hours of torture as they watched TV with their eyelids peeled back like a clockwork orange before turning in another list that will keep me in fur coats and Fabergé eggs. I'm Adam Pachisi from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 more weird wrestling TV cameos. Join us. Number 10, Triple H and Steve Austin on The Bernie Mac Show The Bernie Mac Show was a fictionalized look at beloved comedian Bernie Mac's life as he raised his three nieces and nephews. In one episode, nephew Jordan gets into Bernie's Rolodex where he finds the phone number of Triple H and proceeds to continually prank call him. Trips finds out what's going on, turns up to Bernie's house and reenacts his assault on the Orton property, grabbing young Jordan and pedigreeing him through the kitchen table. Okay, no, he turns up and threatens him with tongs. That damn cerebral assassin, will he stop at any lengths for revenge? Jordan gets into even more sports entertainment scrapes when he joins the school wrestling team and frightened for his nephew's safety, Bernie gets some pointers from one Stone Cold Steve Austin. This basically consisted of Stone Cold talking about beer and raising hell and nothing about psychology or the fundamentals of NCAA freestyle wrestling. If you ask me, Bernie should have called Gene LaBelle instead, got him in to stretch everyone in a 10 mile radius. Number 9, Chris Masters on Big Time Rush. Big Time Rush was a Nickelodeon show in the mid 2000s about a manufactured boy band and not a description of what happens to me when I stand up too quickly. The band in question was also called Big Time Rush and the world of WWE got involved when Chris Masters turned up for about three seconds and a cup of coffee. In the episode Big Time School of Rock, the cheeky lads need to attend class rather than just rock out, getting several teachers to quit so the BT our boys can try and get lessons cancelled for good. However, when their next teacher is described as a former WWE champion, Chris Masters turns up with his Mr. Masterpiece flexing and being all massive and that. Eventually, the scamps eat fake vomit to make him feel ill and he quits. Sounds like child's play compared to what he must have witnessed in the WWE locker room. And also, I'm glossing over the fact that Masters never won a single title in WWE, but whatever. Number 8, The Big Show and Grandmaster Sexe on Shasta McNasty. Remember Shasta McNasty? No? Well, for the uninitiated, it was a short-lived comedy about a rap-slash-rock trio which featured Jake Busey in its lineup. The trio loved wrestling too, as it was 1999, and literally everyone alive at the time was into the graps. Seeing as Shasta shared a network with SmackDown, there was some crossover between the two, including the pilot episode where, after getting their pizza delivery boy arrested, Shasta's pie was instead delivered by The Big Show, who looked down the camera and told people to watch SmackDown on Thursdays on UPN. Subtle as a brick is Big Paul. The hijinks continued in the episode The Quiz, where not only did you have Vern Troyer dressed as mankind, but you also had Grandmaster Sexe having a lovely time in full gimmick before a bar brawl erupted with all the patrons battering each other dressed as the Attitude Era stars of the day. Shasta was cancelled after one season. Obviously. Number 7. The stars of WCW on Love Boat The Next Wave The Love Boat was a popular show that aired almost 50 years ago and featured all manner of crazy happenings on the open seas. Knowing they needed that cool hip audience in the late 90s, the revived Love Boat The Next Wave thought that they'd scored big when they landed Goldberg and Kevin Nash for an episode that also featured Blanche from The Golden Girls. Weirdly though, this isn't technically a cameo as Goldberg and Nash portray Rocky Williams and Lou the Pariah Maguire, but let's face facts, they're basically just playing themselves. Goldberg is trying to enjoy his honeymoon on the love boat when Kev mentions they've got a shot at the tag team champions, Hollywood Hogan and the Giant. Hang on, is this real or not? Anyway, Bill has to choose between the gold or his girl, and he and Kev end up having a big fight on the boat where Goldberg jackhammers some random geek. Eventually though, they all settle their differences and the Coast Guard didn't have to tranquilize anybody. 
body. Number six, Sting on the Nightmare Room. For those unaware of the Nightmare Room, it was basically Goosebumps, but far less memorable. Like Goosebumps, it was a creation from R.L. Stein, and it was about spooky stuff like wolves, ghosts, zombies, and a man called Sting. Yep, everyone's favorite baseball bat swinging goth was in a pre-teens horror anthology series chasing Reese from Malcolm in the Middle through his school. Apparently, Reese was telling lies all the time, and in truly spooky fashion, they all came true, leading the Stinger to try and smash his face in with a bat. It was a bit like the boy who cried wolf, but with a tired meathead who hates the NWO instead of a big feral dog. Speaking of Malcolm in the Middle, how about them opening credits, eh? What can I tell you, kids? Wrestling was hot in the late 90s. Number five, John Cena in Hannah Montana. Unlike The Rock, John Cena is WWE through and through and will never leave the ring to go to Hollywood. Okay, so the leader of the C-Nation was full of it, seeing as he went sprinting off like a dog chasing a hot dog van when Hollywood came a-calling. But when Cena was still plying his trade as the most controversial WWE champion ever, trademark, he decided to kick back, relax, and film an odd cameo for Hannah Montana. Unfortunately, we didn't get a duet between Cena and Miley Cyrus, but we did get Cena coming to life from a wrestling magazine and giving an attitude adjustment over a sofa to Jackson, Hannah Montana's brother who is creepily the same age as Big Match John. Cena then exclaimed that reading is a joy as tons of canned laughter rang out, such is the Disney Channel. The episode aired on September 12, 2010, whilst on the following night's episode of Raw, Cena lost to Randy Orton in a tables match thanks to Raw Roulette. Number 4. Hulk Hogan in the A-Team The two most 80s things ever are the A-Team and Hulk Hogan. And after Hogan and A-Team star Mr. T teamed up for the first WrestleMania, they also teamed up on telly in 1985. You see, Hogan was A-Team powerhouse B.A. Baracus' mate in the Vietnam War, obviously. Years later, Hogan is the main man in the WWF and wants the A-Team's help with a youth center in Venice Beach because, obviously. Bad guys get involved and eventually Hogan, B.A., Corporal Kirchner, Ricky Steamboat and the British Bulldogs send them packing in a family-friendly manner, as opposed to if this happened in real life where Dynamite Kid would have probably just tried to set someone on fire, you know, as a rib. Hogan would turn up a year later to help the A-Team out again because he's such a lovely bloody bloke. This time, the lads would pummel some loan sharks and help a drunk boxer. Also big in the 80s? Cocaine. Number three, The Undertaker in Poltergeist The Legacy. The Poltergeist movies are some of the most beloved in the genre, with the original one in particular being held in high critical regard. The same cannot be said though for spin-off TV series Poltergeist The Legacy. Loosely connected to the movies, The Legacy concentrated on a secret society who helped prevent humankind from all manner of occult bollocks, such as The Undertaker. That's right, Big Booger Red turned up in Series 4. Technically, this isn't a strict cameo, as Taker was playing the Soul Chaser, who was a demon from hell, a paranormal, undead, nigh-unstoppable killing machine with scary eyes. This was, of course, a million miles away from WWE's Undertaker, who was a demon from hell, a paranormal, undead, nigh-unstoppable killing machine with scary eyes. He also chased souls, too. Taker's appearance was pushed heavily by WWE, as both shows were on the USA Network, but nobody seemed to care, as evidenced by the weak rating his episode drew. More believable was Undertaker's cameo on MTV's Downtown, where an animated dead man beat the stuffing out of some anime cosplayers at a comic convention. <laughs> Kids these days. Back in Undertaker's day, people at comic conventions didn't cosplay anime, they carried knives and guns, etc. Number 2. Roddy Piper and Sergeant Slaughter in the Super Mario Brothers Super Show Ah, Super Mario, that Japanese slash Italian cultural icon with his cute round face and his fondness for stamping on turtles. So, when Mario made his cartoon debut in the late 80s, he was naturally played by an almost 60-year-old Captain Lou Albano. Seeing as Captain Lou had links to the wrestling world, all manner of wrestling-affiliated guest stars popped in, from Elvira and Cindy Lauper to Rowdy Roddy Piper and Sergeant Slaughter. Slaughter turned up to the Mario Brothers plumbing shop to cause a hoo-ha. First, he had them fix his steam-o-matic steam machine, no idea, and later had to train the lads for a government mission. Apparently, Slaughter worked for the Mushroom Kingdom military as well as G.I. Joe. As for Piper, the even-tempered friendly Scott decided that his bagpipes needed servicing, so sent them to two old plumbers. Of course, the lads made a right ass of the job, but were saved a pasting from Roddy when it turned out they work fine. <laughs> what a relief.
Number one, the Bushwhackers on Family Matters. ABC's Family Matters focused on Carl Winslow, his family, and irritating neighborhood idiot Steve Urkel. It was a massive hit, and when there was a wrestling-themed episode in the pipeline, the WWF sent the biggest names in the business to appear, the Bushwhackers, in 1994. So, in the episode Psycho Twins, Urkel accidentally KOs wrestling tag team, the Psycho Twins, with some sort of rohypnol drink he invented called Snooze Juice, Bloody hell. So he and Carl take the twins' place to wrestle Luke and Butch, entering the arena tied to Hannibal Lecter restraining harnesses, a bit like Sabu. Obviously, the two think wrestling is fake, but shock horror, it's real, damn it. And when they tell the Bushwhackers that really Urkel is a student and Carl is a cop, the heel police hating Luke and Butch go berserk and start a riot, pummeling Urkel like the nerd he is. Did I do that? Yes, you did, Urkel, you naughty, weird little man. Just thank the Lord it was the Bushwhackers in the ring with you and not the sheep herders.